this is a high yield one. What's the name of this clinical sign? Oh, this one's the, the neck one in um, aortic regurgitation. No, sorry, this is a totally different vessel and you've fallen into a common trap. This does trip up a lot of you, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain it so you never forget it. But I want you to tell me in the comments below what condition you think this patient has. This vessel is not the carotid artery. It's actually the internal jugular vein and there's a few giveaways. You can follow along on page six of my new guide, Never Forget Cardiology. Comment the word sneak peek and I'll send it to you. What you're looking at here is the JVP. There are typically three telltale signs. Firstly, it tends to run at the border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Secondly, it doesn't have the pulsatility of the carotid artery. Usually you'll see it has a double waveform. It goes up and down twice for every heartbeat. And lastly, if you were here and you tried to palpate it, you wouldn't feel a pulse. The JVP is very useful in assessing fluid status as well as function of the right side of the heart. It has three peaks, A, C, and V. Never forget it as atrial contraction, closure of the tricuspid valve, and ventricular contraction. Between these peaks are the X and Y descents. Just remember that the X is when the tricuspid valve is shut, whereas the Y is when the valve opens. This patient has a giant CV wave known as Lancisi's sign. Let me know in the comments what you think is causing it. Oh, and I've got a whole bay full of patients with aortic regurgitation signs, but you're going to have to follow me there.